This is a small portion of Surah Ali Imran. And to give you a little bit of the backdrop of what it is that Allah is commenting on here, this is the aftermath of the Battle of Uhud, the second major conflict in Islamic history. The first of them was Badr and the second of them was Uhud. And in this battle, the Prophet ﷺ was almost killed. He actually fell unconscious, his face covered in blood, and a lot of companions actually thought he's been killed. And they were completely demoralized. Until it was discovered later on that he, was just, he had just fallen unconscious, he had a concussion, but he wasn't in fact killed. What happened thereafter is, of course, it was mentioned, Sheikh Abdul Nasser also alluded to the, the, the catastrophe of Badr. Seventy of the closest companions and the greatest of the companions were martyred uh, in this battle. And the Muslims had to actually retreat. At first they were winning, and because of a strange turn of events, the Muslims actually had to go and go into a retreat. And Quran captures that moment, إِذْ تُسْعِدُونَ وَلَا تَلْوُونَ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ وَالرَّسُولُ يَدْعُوكُمْ فِي أُخْرَاكُمْ When you were climbing up the hill, you weren't even turning back to look at anybody else. You were just making it for the hills to save your lives. And the messenger was actually still left behind, because a lot of people thought he had already died. So the messenger still left back on the battlefield, and the messenger then called you from behind. So catastrophe after catastrophe and emotional disaster on top of disaster struck you. You were, you, you were completely taken as if things couldn't get any worse. And then it, more news hit you like it couldn't get any worse on top of that. So this is a really deeply painful scenario in the Muslim community. But what's worse, after the Muslims make their escape, whatever Muslims have survived that have been deeply injured, they make their mistake. The Quraysh did not pursue them up the mountain. They spoke and they talked trash to the Muslims from the bottom of the mountain and talked about how they've won, they've been victorious, and they left. And now the Muslims who've been demoralized, also been humiliated in a sense, are trying to gather their losses and barely able to stand up when the news comes that there's a rethought by the enemy. The enemy had left the battlefield. But the enemies, and we scouted them, we had intelligentsia keeping an eye on how far they went back, and they had a thought, well, you know, the Muslims are pretty injured right now, and they're pretty demoralized, so they're down for the count. So if we just come back and finish the job, this might be it, we might have to do this again. So the Quraysh thought, maybe we should just go back and finish the job. So even though they had left the battlefield, rumor came, and actually good intelligence came, that they're heading back to finish the job. And it's at that point that the Prophet ﷺ said, before they get back, we're going to get up and go after them. But he's not talking to an army that is deeply motivated and full of zeal and shouting takbirs. He's talking to an army that has seen, including his own uncle, slaughtered and, and, and really mutilated. And he, they've seen some of the greatest warriors be annihilated. And on top of that, the ones that have survived, many of them are deeply injured, not to mention the demoralized situation that exists. And now the Prophet is saying, get up, we're going after the enemy. They just, not hours ago, they ran away from the enemy up the mountain. And now they're being told, get up, forget defense, we're going on the offense. That's what they're being told. And on that, in that scenario, companions that could barely stand up, got up. They stood up. They're bleeding themselves and they got up and basically came before the Prophet ﷺ, we hear and we obey, let's go, let's move. These incredible human beings. And this was so powerful that Allah Azza Himself decided to comment on this remarkable moment, timeless moment in history. And that's what I wanted to share with you. The relevance of it to our discussion is something I leave up to you. I will not spell that out for you. I want you to think for yourselves. Fihi dhikrukum. Quran is talking about you and your situation. How do these remarkable words apply to us? I will not elaborate. That is for you to decide. Yastabshiruna bi ni'matin min Allahi wa fadlin wa anna Allah la yudhi'u ajr al mu'mineen. Some people have died in the battlefield. They're already shuhada. And Allah says about those shuhada that they are already before in the company of Allah, enjoying themselves, full of happiness. And they're waiting for people that haven't yet joined them yet. And in the moments of their joy, they're anticipating more people are gonna make it into Jannah. We just lost 70 companions. Allah says those 70 people couldn't be happier. So don't be sad for them. They're really happy right now. 
and they are enjoying ni'matin min Allah wa fadl. They're enjoying the favor of Allah and on top of that additional blessings. And another thing that they're really happy about is wa anna Allah la yudhi'u ajr al-mu'mineen. That they're, they're overjoyed. Now this is again two people, a group of people already in Jannah and a group of people in the world. I'm talking about the group of people that are already in Jannah. They're enjoying what? They're enjoying one of the most amazing things I've ever read in the Quran. وَيَسْتَبْشِرُونَ You could say it's muttasil here. بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِيعُ أَجْرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ They're overjoyed at the fact that Allah never wastes any of the compensation of believers. Whether win or loss, when you did something for Allah, whether you saw results or not, none of it ever went to waste. If I came to this conference to share something about Allah's book, sincerely, and one of you was sitting here or none of you was sitting here, my, rec my reward is recorded with him. I have nothing to be upset about. Why is there half a hall? Why is there a full hall? That's irrelevant. We're clear about why we do things. And there are people in Jannah that are looking down at the situation and they're happy over the fact that none of what the believers go through is going unrewarded. So the people of Jannah are very clear and Allah mentions it so that the future people of Jannah become very clear. That they're not, their efforts are not going to go unrewarded. That they shouldn't think any less of anything that they do. By the way, in times of great trial, we start thinking, what is my little effort going to do? What is me helping out at a Sunday school or doing a little thing here and there at an MSA or being an Islamic school teacher or helping out in a relief organization? What is my little effort going to do? Every time I try to help a disaster cause, there's a disaster 10 times bigger around the corner. So I don't feel like I'm making any difference. That's when you need this ayah. أَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِيعُ أَجْرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah will not waste the, the, the compensation of any of those who believe me, Allah make us from them. Those who responded to Allah and the Messenger even after deep injury had struck them, meaning they are down, they've been defeated, they're depressed, they're demoralized. They've been crushed by their enemy and they still respond to Allah and the Messenger. Qarh in the Arabic language is different from jarh. Jarh is any injury. Qarh is an injury, is an injury that goes through your flesh and cuts inside of your bone. A deep gash injury. Not an easy one to heal. Maybe even a lethal one. These people that are deeply, deeply wounded still got up. No matter how badly wounded this ummah is, it will still get up. And these are the people, the people that are already in Jannah, Jannah are cheering on. They're, we're not alone. There are people that are waiting for us to join them and they're watching us. When we are hit with injury, they're happy because now, we're, now it's time for us to earn our Jannah. So we shouldn't be depressed when we're in injury, when we're hurting. When we're down, this is the time to earn Allah's greatest rewards. This is the time to celebrate. We have been honored to be put in this position. Those who can excel, who can find the beauty of this deen and still continue to do good and remain conscious and fearful only and only of Allah, those people are going to have great compensation. Those are the people that other people came to them and said, people have gathered against you. Everybody's against you. And they're, they're, they're gathering and uniting their forces. فَخْشَوْهُمْ You should be afraid of everything that's happening around you. فَزَادَهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهِ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ When they heard that everybody's gathering against them, they, that, that, that message made them even stronger in their faith. And they turned back to Allah and said, Allah is enough for us and He's enough to take care of everything we're going through. When we hear the message that people are ganging up on us, that is not a reason to lose our faith in Allah. The people of Jannah, when they hear that, their iman becomes even stronger. These are efforts that the enemy makes thinking that this will make the Muslims weaker. And Quran tells us that the people of the Quran, when you gather your forces, it will only make us stronger. Then those injured soldiers, when they came with the Prophet ﷺ, when they were not injured, they couldn't win. Can you imagine? And now they're injured and they're heading towards the enemy who's galvanized and motivated already. And the, the Quraysh heard that the Muslims, instead of running, are now coming towards us. They got scared and turned away. They got scared and they never met. There was no Uhud 2.0. It didn't happen. There was no rematch. 
And when the Muslims got there, the field was empty, they were gone. And when that happened, well, how did Allah describe it? They came back by the favor of Allah, by the blessing of Allah, by the luxury that Allah accommodated them. No harm touched them. And they followed only the pleasure of Allah. They went out there to make only and only Allah happy. They didn't go for victory. They didn't go to crush the enemy. They didn't go for revenge. The only thing before them was our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said get up and go because that will please your, your Rabb that will please Allah that's why they got up and Allah said when people get up for me I will let no harm come to them Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah if you enjoyed this video please do share it with friends and family 